meditation is becoming a mainstream medical treatment that somehow involves chocolate. And thieves are foiled by a purse-packing granny. Tomorrow is Mental Health Day. It's a national campaign to raise awareness of issues that affect many Canadians. We thought we'd get an early start. Tonight we look at how doctors treat depression. The common answer is medication. But some are now prescribing something else, meditation. Joanna Remiliotis has the story. I'm going to pass this around while you guys find your way into a comfortable seat and just take a piece and put it on your napkin in front of you. It starts with a piece of chocolate. So that you have uh, an indication of where it is, so that you can sense where it is. And a lot of breathing. Feel it as you draw it in. Observe where it spreads to. Twenty minutes later. Take the chocolate and put it into your mouth. A piece of chocolate never tasted this good. Does the taste develop in your mouth? This is a lesson in mindful meditation, where people learn how to literally savor the moment. And it turns out, for many here, it's just what the doctor ordered. It's, it's almost becoming, you know, daily that we are having people come in and, and mentioning that they have been talking, talking to their physicians um, and, and looking at putting this as part of their daily regime. Being in the moment, embracing the now, it may sound kind of new agey, even flaky, but mindful meditation is quickly becoming a common prescription for mental health. A natural remedy for serious ailments like severe depression and anxiety. It's helped me, uh, especially with the panic attacks that I was experiencing. And there was some so bad that I thought I was having a heart attack. My doctor really was adamant about how meditation can help you deal with the stress of life. But how does the simple act of paying attention to the present actually work? It turns out being mindful actually changes the way our minds function. A U.S. study published last month found people who practiced mindful meditation for half an hour a day for eight weeks had an increase in gray matter in the hippocampus, the part of the brain that deals with learning and memory. And what's more, the area connected to anxiety and stress, called the amygdala, actually got smaller. The people with training in mindfulness, as you can see here, mm -hmm. did less of the worrying. Zindel Siegel's research has gone even further. They're able to become curious and watch the sadness instead of rushing to intervene and fix it right away. His most recent study found a mindful meditation is just as effective as medication to prevent depression relapse. A lot of what happens when people practice mindfulness uh, meditation is that they start to become their own therapists. They learn how, once the formal training is over in the group, to do for themselves the very things that might be helpful that they can uh, understand about their emotions. So to watch difficult emotions uh, come up in the mind, not to run away from them. I just went into it really not believing that it would help. Um, but I was desperate, you know. After years battling depression, Suzanne Simoni was skeptical that this would help. Follow along with my instructions as best you can and then use the stretch of silence to practice on your own. But learning how to quietly observe her demons has been nothing short of life-altering. What it's doing is it's shifting you into that moment. Simone is now off antidepressants and finds peace of mind in every walk of her life. It just sounds so simple as a concept. Mm -hmm. Is it easy? It's not easy at all. It's not a cure. It's not something that you can do and your troubles will be over. It's not like that at all. It's a shift of attention, but you, your feelings are still there. They might be diminished. They mm -hmm. might, you know, occasionally, just by shifting your attention, they might disappear completely. So our awareness is centered with the breathing. Many in healthcare say it's leading to a shift in the practice of mental health taking the focus away from medication alone. 
If you notice that your mind is wandering, when you notice that, just bring it back. This clinic opened just a few months ago to cater to healthcare workers who want to learn more about meditation. Dr. Tim Cook says it's important to offer his patients choices. A big advantage of this is uh, when we look at the risk benefit of any kind of treatment or intervention, um, most of the medications we use, not only are they costly, but they can cause side effects. And uh, there are very few side effects of sitting and calming your mind and learning to uh, observe without judgment. An exercise in contemplation that is changing how doctors and patients picture mental health. And breathing out nice and slow through the nose. One breath at a time. Joanna Brumaliotis, CBC News, Mississauga, Ontario. Depression touches the lives of so many Canadians. About three million people are struggling with depression right now. That's about 8% of all Canadians. And doctors say those who've had an episode in the past have a 30 to 40% chance of experiencing depression again.